Jesus Christ sent John the Baptist and then three of his apostles to give Joseph Smith priesthood authority. Hmm, let me see. God knew there would be an apostasy. Through an Old Testament prophet, he said, Behold, the days come that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of the bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And the people shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. It's interesting, to and fro. That's the same uh, context of the book of Job, whenever it says Satan was walking to and fro. This right here is the, um, the restoration, the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a pamphlet that was given to me by the Mormons just yesterday. They asked me, they said, do you have any copy of the Latter-day Saints book? And I said, yeah, i got a few sitting around. And uh, I get the Mormons a lot, especially when it's warmer outside. They come up to my home and they ask me, uh, you know, have I accepted Jesus? Would I be a part of their church? And all this kind of stuff. And uh, as usual... As always, whenever religious people come up to my home, I'm not one of these type of people who are rude and considerate whenever I run into religious people. I'm not someone who just automatically gets on the attack and stuff and starts trying to prove them wrong or, or try to make them look stupid in some kind of way. What I do, though, is I will go outside and I will sit with them and sometimes even allow them inside my home and sit down. <clears throat> I listen to their points of view. And, of course, I expect, out of respect, because they're in my home, that they'll allow me to also ask them questions and talk to them. When I ask questions to religious people, especially Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses, uh, again, it's not in any kind of way to insult them. But I want to try to understand how they view it. There's one thing I've discovered about religious people that I've always found captivating is that none of them believe the same thing. They'll all hold up the same books, but none of them share the same things. Um, the only things that they seem to hold on to that they do believe is that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. But even that is kind of complicated for some religious people. Although it sounds like it's pretty cut and dry that they all believe in Jesus, it's what version of Jesus they believe in. There's some people who believe that Jesus Christ is dark complexed, completely different than what the Mormons make him out to look to be. Yesterday when I was talking to the Mormons, I brought up the fact that their book states that the reason why people are black and the reason why people are dark complexed is because their ancestors had done some kind of wrong or evil. According to the Mormon book, if you were a white person a long time ago and you committed a crime against God, such as a sin, God turned you into a black person. And that was your sentence for being bad, which in turn points the finger at the entire black community, the entire black human race, and says... The reason why you're black is because you've been cursed by God, because you're considered evil in his eyes. Now, one of the things that I thought was funny about this, besides the fact that it's completely racial and insultive towards black folks, but I also mentioned to them that a lot of Bible scholars and a lot of historians who believe that there might have been a possibility that Jesus existed. See, nobody has any real kind of evidence of Christ ever existing at all. But let's say the guy did. Most people would agree that this white guy that you see on the Latter-day Saints pamphlet here, the cartoon that they gave me with all kinds of picked out, hand-picked scriptures, is not what Jesus would have looked like. Nor that lamb, for that matter. That lamb would have probably been a lot dirtier, but I think that we understand why they portray Jesus looking like that. White, pure, nice feather in the hair, kind of metrosexual type of look. A lot of people believe that Jesus Christ, if he actually existed, most likely looked a lot like Osama bin Laden. 
That's right. A lot of people believe that he was probably very uh, dark-skinned and um, somebody that the Mormons probably wouldn't have fell in love with too quickly because the Mormons have an idea that white people are the superior race and if you're white then you must be pure. Sounds a lot like the Ku Klux Klan, doesn't it? The difference is, is the Ku Klux Klan drives down the road blaring their horns and screaming and wearing sheets like cowards and the Muslim, the, uh, not the Muslims, but the the uh, Mormons will throw on blue suits and beat on your door and shit and come to you with a smile and happiness and love. Hell, as far as I know, some Mormons could be Ku Klux Klan members. You never know because they're all dressed up in sheets anyway. But <clears throat> one of the things that the Mormons told me that I, I found to be just brilliant was that they were telling me about their big temple, their big Mormon temple, as being attacked by homosexuals and blacks as we speak. <clears throat> and I said, well, of course, you, your church stands behind the idea that people who are black are, are demonic, that they're evil, that they're satanic. And you guys also stand against homosexuals, and you claim that they're dirty and they're sick and they're wrong. <clears throat> when you attack minorities or you attack people for their skin color or because of their sexual preferences, their own civil rights, you're going to get people who are pissed off. You're going to get people um, burning shit up, blowing stuff up, running through the streets like fucking chickens with their head cut off. And and I think that it's, uh, it's right. I think that people should fight, and I think people should get mad whenever uh, different churches or different organizations or groups try to instill this kind of fear and anxiety into society trying to make uh, these different people out to look like shit. Um, I know I would if people were doing that to me. I would I would have a lot to say about the problem. Heck, sometimes I even feel like I'm in the still like that. I feel like, you know, uh, atheists, agnostics, and deists are treated like outcasts in society because religion seems to be a majority. Um, will I blow up a building? Will I shoot fire through a window? No. I'll just simply talk about it and deal with it. Uh, unless I have to physically defend myself, which I don't think will happen anytime soon. But, like I said in my last video, you never know what's going to happen in this silly world. So, that's a little bit about how I think about the situation. Um, the Mormons... Um, as nice as they were, they didn't have any answers, and they also admitted to never hearing any audible voices of God. Uh, not very many religious people have I ever met have actually seen or heard God actually talk to them. Most religious people will always tell you that they believe that God is working in their life because if something good happens to them, you know, maybe they get a new car or their mortgage is almost paid off, they believe that God helped them with that. They can't give themselves credit for the job they did or the finances that they did for themselves. Because according to a religious person, every good that they do, it's not them doing good, it's God. It kind of sounds uh, kind of uh, quirky and everything, but that's the way it is. So you've been listening to The Stallion. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video. I've got plenty more to come.